Yes, right now is newly announced White House Press Secretary, Sean Spicer. Sean, great to see you. Good morning, Maria. Congratulations Thank to you. Thank you very much. What a big job. President Obama has been criticized for the optics of his actions through the last eight years in the wake of terrorist attacks. How will President-elect Donald Trump address these developments? Well, I think very forcefully and very swiftly. Uh, you've seen it with domestic aspects already and some foreign policy uh, pieces that he's, he's done. He, he's not a man to sit back. He's going to take action and get results. And I think he's going to be intimately involved. I think the pattern in the past has probably been a lot of presidents let their staff go out. He's a guy who picks up the phone, calls CEOs, calls leaders, foreign leaders, and talks about what needs to happen. And you've seen it already since he was elected. He gets results, and he's going to change Washington in a way that people have never understood. It's going to be America first. It's going to be the American people, American workers, American families. What, what about talking to the press? How will that be different? I mean, he's got a relationship with the American people. He uses that right. through Twitter. Facebook, um, Instagram, a and lot. It's, and it's very effective. It is. What does that mean for your role and how it will be different in terms of speaking well, to it, the press? It, it means that there's an added avenue. Um, that in the past you have the White House press secretary goes out and says this is what the president's speaking. He's got a direct line to the American people. That's a totally different concept that I think has existed in the past. We'll continue to use that. He will speak very honestly, authentically, and forcefully via Twitter and other things. But you saw the other night he's, he enjoys uh, going out with the press and talking to them. He understands the role they play in our democracy. So it's just an added layer more than anything else. People are talking about the fact that he hasn't done a press conference yet. Uh, the countdown is on. 147 well, look, days no, no, but, since but, Trump held his last formal news conference. Right, I know, and, and I think the word formal is there. He sat down with the New York Times for an hour and a half. He's been on multiple shows. Uh, he sat with the Will press corps. Will he do another press other... conference? Oh, yeah, he's good. we've got one in January that we're going to do. We've okay. already announced it. Okay. Um, and I know, but, but look, I don't think the American people are sitting around saying, when is he going to have a formal press conference? He speaks very frequently and forcefully on Twitter. He has been interviewed mo numerous times. He's going to continue to, to, to speak out uh, often. Uh, the inauguration, obviously, we're, we're all looking forward to. Any plans in terms of speaking to the press? What is the communication around the inauguration? There's an entire team down in Washington, uh, part of the presidential inaugural committee, that is working on messaging and, and opportunities to, to for, for the inauguration. Uh, so there'll be a lot of activities and things that come out through that. I'll tell you, he's done a lot so far, and he's not even in office yet. I know. I, I want to ask you now, he's finally expected to take a vacation the next couple of days. President I don't think Trump he doesn't under... Look, I will tell you this. He will never take a vacation. He is... You look at what he... He can't sit still. He is so eager to get things done and change things up. There is never an idle moment. Uh, and, and so there is not going to be the word vacation. will not <laughs> exist in a Trump administration. Well, this is where I was going with this. Uh, President-elect is set to golf with Tiger Woods today. Uh, will he follow through with his plans in the wake of the tense situations around the world? Uh, because we know that President Obama has been criticized. You had all of these terrorist attacks this week, and President Obama is golfing in Hawaii. What does Donald Trump have to say about that? Well, I think there's a difference. He's not president yet. And if you look at the flurry of meetings the guy he's had, the president-elect has met with over 100 individuals for positions. He's briefed daily by his staff on national security and other issues, staffing requirements. He's talked to, what, almost 100 foreign leaders. So he is kept extremely busy. Uh, but yes, once in a while he will play, play a round of golf, especially during the time before he assumes the office. Why is he golfing with Tiger Woods? Is it, are they they're, just friends? They're or? friends. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me ask you about some of the tweets, because on the one hand, a lot of people feel like that's great that he has this direct line with the American people. On the other hand, people are saying, well, wait a second. Maybe those Twitter, the Twitter account should be looked at and followed by somebody else, or you know, the tweets should be seen by you first. So the president-elect seems to be starting something of a nuclear arms race on Twitter when he tweeted this: "The United States must greatly strengthen and expand its nuclear capability until such time as the world comes to its senses regarding nukes." Then Russian President Vladimir Putin said. He wants, he said this, he wants to strengthen the military potential of strategic nuclear forces. What do we make of all of this well, nuclear I, I think, talk? I think what we make of it is that other countries are talking about, not just Russia, but others, have talked about increasing their nuclear capacity. This president's not going to sit back and let other countries do that and have America sit on the sidelines. He's going to put America's security first and foremost. And so it's a warning to other nations around the globe that as he put in that tweet, unless you come to your senses, America's not going to sit back and
and take this action lightly. Okay, so, and, and that tweet he did on his own, I mean, all of his tweets, they're not looked at by anyone. No, he's the president of the United States, right. he, well, he's the president-elect. He doesn't ask for permission. But is he going to tweet when he's president? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But look at the results that he's gotten so far. He tweeted about Carrier. He saved yeah, their jobs. He talked about the overruns on the F-35. He saved a billion dollars. He tweeted about Boeing's cost for the new Air Force One. The CEOs came, he took it down. You know, he, he it's, it's, look at the amount of success and results that he's getting. And, and by the way, people are comparing it to the last eight years and saying, how come President Obama never picked up the phone and called Carrier? How come President Obama wasn't focused right. on the And cost? you're going to see more of this. He picks up the phone. He gets things done. He, he doesn't sit back and delegate. He's a doer and a guy that gets things done. Let me ask you about some of the sensitive subjects here and, and, and of course, the potential conflict of interest in terms of business. President-elect Trump's sons have addressed the potential conflict of interest, backing away from their charitable causes. but. Uh, uh, President like Trump tweeted this my wonderful son Eric will no longer be allowed to raise money for children with cancer because of a possible conflict of interest my presidency isn't this a ridiculous shame he loves these kids has raised millions of dollars for them and now must stop wrong answer when can we expect the president-elect to address some of his own, the, the role in his business? Well, he's talked about, we're going to have a, an event in, uh, in January, we'll lay it all out. But I think the point that he's getting there is you look at this, the work that Eric Trump has done for St. Jude's. He has been a tireless advocate to raise money it is to bad. help St. Jude's and these children with, and families who are dealing with children with cancer. And, and because of people trying to make something of it, the, you know, the lawyers get involved and say, well, it's, it's, you probably shouldn't do this anymore. It's sad because he has done, Eric and, and the rest of the children have really spent a lot of time helping particular causes and making uh, people who have, are facing challenging situations, whether it's cancer or otherwise, um, and, and now they have to rethink that. And that's yeah. just, that's unfortunate that there's, that people can't, uh, that, that, understand that, that there is a difference between, you know, fundraising for you for sake and helping children with cancer or in Don Jr.'s case, helping preserve the environment and conservation efforts. Yeah, it really is a shame, actually. But this is a different situation than anybody has seen that is. It's, in it's, the past. Business as usual is over. Exactly. Sean, it's great to see you. Thank Congratulations. You. We'll be watching. Much.